What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and today I'm gonna to talk about a topic that, uh, it's just gonna be mostly a talking head, and so if you guys don't really wanna look at this ugly mug, um, unfortunately it's the only face I have. I don't worship the mini face god, therefore I can't change my face. So, shout out to all my Game of Thrones fans out there. Last night's episode, oh yeah. But I wanna to talk to some of the beginner builders about things that are branded as gaming and whether or not that really makes them better for you. I get a lot of this in my inbox and even the comments on my recent Gigabyte GTX 1080 G1 gaming video, a lot of people were like, really? A gaming 1080? Show me the one that's not meant for gaming, would you?" Yeah, I kind of felt the same way, guys. So we're gonna talk about that today. The new Z170 classified motherboard from EVGA features eight-phase PWM, four-way SLI support, along with top-notch components to offer gamers and enthusiasts more of what they want. A badass motherboard with no compromises. Click the link below to learn more. Now, over the last couple of generations of graphics cards, we have seen a little bit of a trend going here. For instance, as I already mentioned, GTX 1080 G1 Gaming. Well, does that mean they have a G1 that's not a gaming? MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X, and they even have a Gaming Z. Does that mean that that one's better for gaming? Or does that mean it's better than this one here, the EVGA GTX 1080 Superclocked? It or Superclocked. The Superclocked? I did it again. It doesn't say gaming, so clearly those are better than this one, right? Quite honestly, guys, you can just sort of ignore the name when it comes to graphics cards. Now, gaming motherboards aren't quite so black and white when it comes to whether or not they're truly built for gamers. It, this is something you really got to determine for yourself. For instance, Gaming motherboards tend to be right in the middle ground. They're higher than the basic entry-level stuff, but they're not as high as the workstation motherboards. Now, gaming motherboards tend to th have things like killer nicks in them, which are supposed to prioritize gaming traffic, giving priority uh, for you know gaming packets to reduce your gaming lag and stuff like that. I don't know whether or not those truly work. I've never actually tested that to see if it really makes any sort of a difference. Um, but they also seem to have a little bit better sound cards built onto them and usually they'll have some sort of a uh, amplified headphone jack, so if you use high impedance headphones, then you're gonna be able to run them off of your motherboard without the need of a DAC. A lot of people who care about sound are not going to run onboard audio. They're going to run some sort of an external amp and DAC, or they're gonna have an ampl like a full-size amplifier or something. Network cards are network cards as far as I'm concerned, so I don't know if the prioritization of packets really makes any sort of a difference. But pretty much all motherboards these days are gonna have at least a gigabit ethernet built in. On Skunkworks, I just use the built-in Intel uh, ethernet, and I don't have any issues regarding lag and stuff when it comes to games. It's not even branded as gaming when it comes to the network, it's just a basic you know, one gigabit ethernet built into the gigabyte board. Now workstation motherboards tend to have the best quality of components on them, things like the best quality capacitors, best quality chokes, best PCB layout, they're thicker, they're more durable, they're gonna tend to have better heat sinks on them, more power phases, uh, what, designed to make them extremely durable and very robust because they're meant to deal with very heavy workloads from people who work in professional environments, things like very high-end video editing and stuff like that. Typically, they're functions that gamers wouldn't use. They would have, you know, 10 or more SATA ports on there, SATA Express, tons of M.2s, things that you're just not going to need. Sometimes, you know, eight or nine PCI Express slots because they're meant to have enough room for expansion cards and RAID cards and things that you just aren't going to need. But when it comes to graphics cards, though, and seeing the word gaming put in the title, uh, it really is something that's just considered a bit of marketing to try and get your attention to go, hey, I'm building a gaming computer, so I want the stuff that says gaming. Yeah, GTX 1080 is a GTX 1080, and custom boards tend to, you know, they really do perform within one or two percent of each other at the most. Typically, it's one or two FPS difference, which is less than one or two percent uh, when it comes to how they perform compared to each other. And just because they say gaming on there doesn't mean they're more suited for gaming. Uh, really, the only f features you're gonna find that are different between different graphics cards are gonna be things like RGB or how many fans are on there or how much RGB control do you have? Does the LEDs breathe? Especially this year, it's kind of like, especially Computex was like the year of RGB. RGB, all the things. And then you slap the word gaming on it and it must make it a better product. But unfortunately, that's just not true. The only thing you really need to concern yourself with with building a gaming computer is the quality of graphics card that you're putting in there. The graphics card is going to be the number one most influential part in your system that's gonna determine how good of a gaming experience you have. 
And if you, you could put gaming RAM and gaming motherboard and the top of the line CPU you've ever had and heck, even gaming branded SSDs, but put in a substandard graphics card, you're gonna have a substandard gaming experience. It's as simple as that. It's unfortunate to see so many things marketed now as gaming. Um, but anyway, I hope this video has helped some new buyers and new shoppers understand that there's more to look for than just whether or not something is branded as gaming. Check out all the reviews for the products that it is that you're interested in and even take things like Newegg reviews and, and Amazon reviews into account. And if a lot of people are saying something is garbage, then it probably is. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about here is, can a gaming computer also be a workstation? Absolutely. Skunkworks right here has an overclocking motherboard in there, not any sort of a uh, workstation motherboard. I've got three GTX Titan Xs in there, which aren't even that great when it comes to workloads because they don't have any uh, double precision or anything going on in them. But I still render every video you guys see on this system, which pretty much doubles as a workstation and a gaming system. Typically the parts you would use to build a gaming machine are gonna be very good at doing dual purpose. A lot of people wanna get into live streaming their video games, but they're concerned about, do I need to build a streaming PC to capture all the output from my gaming PC? And typically that's just not necessary. It's, it's simply not. And you can easily build a gaming machine that is capable of dual, double duty, doing your rendering and doing your gaming. Guys, I hope today's video has helped you understand that you should probably ignore the word gaming when it comes to shopping for your parts for your gaming computer and try to make the best decision you can based on the features that are included on the product. If you guys have any other suggestions for topics that you think I should cover, then make sure you let me know in the comments or head on over to Twitter, let me know there. You can find the information for that down in the description. And don't worry guys, we have some more content coming up here regarding graphics cards and games. RX 480 stuff coming up uh, right around June 29th, which is NDA lifts on that. And we got the GTX 1070 super clock from EVGA that I'm benchmarking right now. And uh, we're gonna start getting into some more lower end stuff as well to try and cover uh, as much ground as we can when it comes to people who are shopping in all sorts of budget ranges. In fact, I wanna kind of do a budget build to see how far we can stretch some money. So we'll be doing that here in the future. As always guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you liked what you saw. And if you didn't like what you saw, you know what to do. But if you did, you know you gotta mash the hell out of that like button. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.